good morning students today we will discuss a very important and new topic in electronics that is the extension of our previous uh, video lectures that is the pn junction diode the working mechanism perhaps you enjoyed the previous one and hopefully this will also be very fruitful for your understanding about the transistor so here the working principle means what we want to discuss first what is the literal meaning of transistor the transfer of resistor is basically the transistor how you can see that it is basically coming from the two letter two words one is transfer or and there is resistor more precisely if we want to uh, discuss we can say it is a combination of transconductance and variable resistor so what is transconductance it is basically the ratio of change in output voltage compared to the change in input current now from the transconductance the trans and we are taking another is the ester so then we can get the transistor okay so i think it is clear for you that why the transistor name came and here we will uh, just give you the essence of the types of transistors one is bipolar junction transistor and i think you know that bi means two so where the two charges that means majority and minority carriers are both responsible for the conduction mechanism then it is called the bipolar junction transistor that is the symbolic representation of the bipolar junction transistor and today's discussion focused on this bipolar junction transistor another one is the field effect transistor there the uni it is another thing is another name is unipolar junction transistor here the majority carrier is basically responsible for the charge carriers conduction okay so that is basically the difference but our today's discussion focused on bipolar junction transistor so what is bipolar junction transistor to to start with this topic we have to say about the semiconductors what is semiconductors i already discussed in our previous uh, video lectures so here that we can say ability to change from conductor to insulator so the transistor has the semiconductors has this um, ability that it can allow the current or prohibit the current to flow the transistor basically use it is application wise it is an it can use as an amplifier it can use as a switch so the amplifier means you know the amplify the signals so if i wish to amplify the signals this is very very important because when we uh, transfer the signals from one end to the other end at that time it is a very important that the amplification otherwise it will be distorted and decay the signals which we want to uh, transport from one end to the other end another thing is the switch in the computer you know there is we are using the switch the transistors are behaving as a switch so if you are very interested then you can open the power supply box some smps or your adapter which you are using for the charging of the uh, your cell phone your smartphone there you can get this type of components this is nothing but a three leads components are generally represented the transistors so that these transistors are the bipolar junction transistor and we can use it 
very often in the circuits okay in the circuit box here is a three terminals and two junctions i already told the bipolar means the both majority and minority carriers are responsible for flow of charges now why transistor that i already told you that for long distance travel signal must be amplified otherwise it will distort it so that is the one of the objective to use the transistor in a circuit okay now i am just discussing here some of the history of the transistor in 1947 at bell labs burden breton and shockley these three guys are basically invented the first point contact transistor which is kept in at bell labs um which is the name is now is the lucent technologies it is in united states of america so there they we, they are using the you know the uh, materials is the germanium but nowadays we are using the doped silicon now what is doped so we will discuss the doping right so doping is very common because in the semiconductor we are using this term for making it electropositive or electronegative that is our main objective to use the doping so the semiconductor like the silicon it is tetravalent you can see here it is a tetravalent means the outer shell electron consists of four electrons and they will make the adjacent silicon atom with a covalent bond so when we will replaced the one silicon atom by trivalent atoms like boron aluminum then there will be one lack of electrons and you know the deficiency of electrons are defined as the holes right so the majority carrier in case of p type semiconductor there the majority carrier is a holes because the deficiency of electron so this is the system we are basically making for electropositive so it will be electropositive in nature similarly if we we'll think about electronegative there we have to use where we can get the excess of electron so the pentavalent atoms will be the part which will use for the replacement of one silicon atom and we know it is by diffusion we can do it so we will just replaced one uh, silicon atom and we put it put there in the phosphorus or boron i uh, sorry the nitrogen or arsenic or antimony so then the excess of electron will be there so it will help to extra electron will help to uh, communicate or conduct the things so then the uh, important that the um, charge carrier uh, excess electrons will help to conduct so it is the electronegative type of semiconductor we can make okay so the, like this way we can we can make the n type or p type semiconductor now the our discussion is basically focused on the bipolar junction transistor so here the three components are responsible i told you already that is the emitter another is the base another is a collector and important here the two junction one is base to emitter junction another is collector to base junction so the emitter base and collector the two junctions and three terminals or three um, sectors are basically consist the in a transistor okay now here you see this the gray part is basically the ohmic contact so this ohmic contact we can make or which is very uh, important to make the relation between the external lead with the emitter or base or collector okay so two types of the transistors are existing one is the pnp transistor 
another is the MPN transistor. So PNP means emitter is p-type semiconductor, base is n-type semiconductor, and collector is p-type semiconductor. Similarly, in NPN, the emitter is n-type, base is p-type, and collector is n-type. So now, the basically, if you think, it is nothing but a two diodes are uh, connecting in this manner, such that this side, you know, this side is a P, this side is N. So it is P and P transistor. And similarly, here, this is the NPN transistor. But if we can connect the two diodes in this way, then whether we are able to get the same functionality of the transistor, answer is no. Why? Because there we cannot form the two junction. You can see in case of the transistor, there is the base to emitter junction, another is the collector to base junction. So these two parts are basically missing here. Only one junction will make here. So what is what should be your answer? That if we can uh, uh, connect the two diodes, then whether we are able to get the same functionality like the transistor, the no, because we cannot form the base to emitter or collector to base junction in this case, and so the depletion region will not be formed properly, and we cannot get the functionality like the transistor in case of two diodes arrangement. Okay. Next is the symbolic representation. That is the schematic one, the schematic NPN. Similarly, this is for NPN transistor, this is the PNP transistor. Now, symbolic representation here, what we, when we draw the circuit diagram, there we are using the components like this. Okay? So, if I will see, then I can easily understand that this is the representation for the transistor the BJT, bipolar junction transistor. And this is the symbol and the base emitter and collector, this is also uniform. I cannot change. I cannot make it different. I cannot put, instead of base, I cannot put here the collector, right? And the thing you can see the arrow, the arrow, the put it in the emitter. From there, we can distinguish the NPN and PNP. NPN means the arrow is coming out and PNP means it is going in. What is the meaning of the, the arrow? It is basically showing the, the direction of holes okay, in the transistor. Next, this, this part is very important to understand the BJT, the conduction mechanism. You see this is the emitter. This is the base and this is the collector. For the understanding, we are making it NPN combination, the types. And here, this part is the input loop. And input loop, we will give with or we will provide with the forward bias mode. And in the output loop, we will make it in the reverse bias mode. So there, you know, this is one junction and this is another junction. So, this junction is called the base to emitter junction and it is in the forward bias and this junction is the collector to base junction and this should be reverse bias. And this is the thumb rule when, where we will apply the circuit, everywhere we will use the same concept. The input loop should be forward bias and output loop should be reverse bias. So that is the concept and here this deep, the, now the question I think it is clear for you that why the depletion region width will be less in case of emitter to base junction because it is in the forward bias. So the demand the depletion region is nothing but a demand of charges. So the recombination will prohibited here in the depletion region. So when we will use the reverse bias Obviously, the region, the width will be more because the recombination will be less. It will be restricted, right? It is already we know from the PN junction diode discussion. 
so i am not going in detail on that the here the important is that the emitter should be highly doped so what is highly doped means that it, the density the doping density will be 10 to the power 22 20 21 per centimeter cube so if the carrier here the carrier density will be more then the carrier will be ripple from the ohmic part towards the junction right and they will approach towards this and it will come to the base point the base region and in the base region you know this is the p type so there will be some recombination will occur and then it will go to the collector region so the 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 carriers will approach from emitter to base and from base to collector so then it will collect in the collector region so from the input sector to the output sector through base right and here you can see that the collector the emitter uh, the it is i told you it is heavily doped the base will be lightly doped that means 10 to the power 15 to 10 to the power 16 per centimeter cube the doping density and the collector will be in the moderately doped that means 10 to the power 17 to 10 to the power 18 per centimeter cube will be the doping density in the collector and the, you can see the width of the collector region will be more and in the base region is less it is thin okay so it is sandwiched between the e emitter and the collector the base right so from here we are understanding that the emitter the input that means the base to emitter junction will be always in forward bias and collector to base junction should be always in reverse bias okay so next is the transistor operation the same things which i just discussed here is the working you can see that the carriers which is moving from the emitter towards the base and from the base to collector the how they, there will be some recombinations are occurring here i am just showing these things and after that these are going just um, uh, overcome the uh, collector to base junction which is in the reverse bias mode and then it will reach or it will arrive to the collector region similarly one thing is that i told you that it is a thin layer so the micro ampere range current will be there in case of base region and the and the thing is the collector current i told you already so now if we will summarize our discussion then what we will get that the two junctions one is the emitter to base junction another is the base to collector junction and transistor may be considered as two diodes connected back to back consider but we cannot do like this i already discussed so next is the three terminals is there emitter region is heavily doped i already told you then the base region is very thin and lightly doped and most of the current carriers injected into the base pass on to the collector so in the collector region we will collect the current and it is a moderately doped okay so next we will just make this in summary we will make a table from this table it is clear for you that the it is emitter is heavily doped this is thin layer or lightly doped and it is moderately doped the emitter emit carriers into the base and then there will be the recombination will occur and activating the transistor so this is also required and the last one is very much important that in the current measures in milliampere range in case of emitter and in the but in the base it is microampere uh, range but the collector is also milliampere if i'll use the kirchhoff's current law then we can say the emitter current is a summation of collector and base current so that is the things of the different parts of transistors i think this is this up to this it is very clear to you